Hello everyone, I'm here at Dubs Customs and in this video, we're gonna be looking over this beautiful Lincoln Continental. Customer states that it's leaking fuel from the tank. And well, I know that because when I picked it up, it was leaking fuel from the tank. At first glance, it looks amazing. I do notice right off the bat that the back end does look a little bit low compared to the front. So we're gonna start by doing a little bit of a measurement there, but I want this video to be non-biased, non-judgmental. I don't care who built it. I just wanna know what happened and how can we fix it? So we're gonna start by just doing a quick measurement and seeing if my theory is correct by the ass end is squatted down just a little bit compared to the front. So right off the bat, I would want to fix that. Then we're gonna lift the car up and we're going to see what the real issue is and why the tank ended up getting punctured. This is a brand new build. And again, I don't care who built it. It's just, we need to fix it. So I'm gonna get in there with the tape measure. We're going to measure right there and right there. And we're gonna see what the difference is because I would like to set it up so it was just a little bit high in the back. So if you get two to three people on the back seat, it's not gonna be sitting ass low. So that's where I'm gonna start. Then we're gonna lift it up with the hoist, set it on some blocks so it's at ride height. And we're gonna go underneath, see where the puncture in the tank is and see what else might be going on underneath there to cause the problem. We want to find out, did something let go or break to cause the rear end to shift and puncture the tank? Or was it human error, like somebody forgot one step and didn't set something up? So let's start with tape measure, and then we're going to lift it up and get underneath. Okay, so I'm going to use this as my measuring device. It's seven inches. Let's see what the front is looking like. So it looks to be pretty much right at seven inches. And we're gonna come around to the back. And, well, you can see it looks to be about three eighths of an inch lower. So not that much lower. But if you do get people in the back of this vehicle, it's gonna squat down even more. And well, to me, it makes it look like it's taking a dump. So I like to set my cars up a little bit high in the back, not enough to be noticeable, but just enough so when you get people in the back, it's still sitting level. So we will make that adjustment underneath once we get underneath there. Let's position the car in between the hoist here and lift it up and put it on blocks. This is a heavy car. It's more than I really like to lift on this hoist, but I think it can handle it. So I just noticed one more thing while I was lifting the car up just to take the weight off of the rear end so I can start taking it apart. I'm not sure at this point if it's an issue or not, but it sure seems like the suspension is maybe bound up. I'm not sure. Cause watch when I lift the vehicle up, like, there can't be any weight on the coils. The coils aren't coming up much before like it lifts the wheel off. Like watch this, watch the bottom of the wheel and watch right here on the quarter and the upper bit of the rim. Watch how much movement there is there. You'd think that it would be squatted down a little bit, but I'm going to just log that into the back of my brain and I'm gonna keep an eye out for if there's any issue causing this, or is the spring just way too hard? Because watch this. So I got no weight on the arms right now. I'm gonna bump it up. It's coming up. Look at, and the wheel is already raising. See how it's off the block? And we've only still have like a half an inch there? That seems odd. This thing must, ride down the road like a brick. So we're going to see what's going on there as well. All I wanted to do is just lift the weight of the car off a little bit. So when I undo everything, the rear end is just sitting there on the wood. 
and I've got no issues with it going anywhere. So I've got to come back down just a little bit, but weird. So we're gonna let it sit right there. Let me know what you guys think. Is that an issue? I think it might be. Before I get underneath there, I'm gonna pull a measurement from the tire to the inside of the rear quarter panel right here, just to see how centered the rear end is. And that's gonna start to kind of create a little bit of a map. So to the outside, we're three inches. On the driver's side here, I can tell right off the bat that the rear end is shifted. We're five and a half inches. So it's shifted over an inch and an eighth right now. So that's the first little bit of information that we have. Let's go underneath and see what else we can find and start building ourselves a picture of what happened and how we're gonna fix the problem. So I've got my flashlight. Let's get underneath here and have a look. Don't mind how shaky the camera is or anything because I'm doing this one-handed and on my own. So I'm gonna do the best I can. So I know the fuel leak is over here and you can see a little bit of the remnants of the paint being removed here, most likely because of the gasoline. I noticed the rear, or not the rear, sorry. I noticed that the exhaust is pretty close, but not touching. Everything seems to be pretty close under here. Oh yeah, there's some damage. So you can see, Let's see if I can get this sitting in a nice spot here. That's all shadowed. Well, this might be tougher. So let me get my camera up in here. So you can see right there that the bolt has contacted the fuel tank and put a big split in it. You can see it right there by that dark spot, right in there. That dark spot actually isn't the rip, but it's in behind that bolt. So the rear end has shifted to the passenger side and made contact with the tank. So now we know two bits of information. One thing that I'm noticing here, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but right off the rip, the rear axle Opinion. looks it looks like it's hanging down a little bit and I can just see it from this you know that it looks like it is down where those of you who don't know the rear axle should be like one degree off of whatever the engine angle sits at so under load it comes up and they become the same so it's a straight line through your drive shaft Right now we look like our rear end is like this and our engine is most likely like that. And what that will do is cause tremendous vibration down the road when you're hitting like a hundred, it will be vibrating like crazy. So that's a theory right now, but we're gonna have to bring the angle finder and just check the angle on the engine, check the angle on the rear end and see where we're at there. So let's keep diving underneath here and see what else that we can find. So now we know that it's gone to the passenger side. Now I would like to lift the car up higher, but then we won't be on these blocks and I don't think we'll get as accurate of information. So, oh, okay. So now, we are, uh, it's probably hard for you guys to see here, but it is a triangulated four link setup. It looks like we, I don't know if you can see that, but we're pretty much all the way in with our joint there. There's no thread left there. So there's no adjustment there. So what does that mean right now? I don't know, but let's just log that. 
And up here, you can see that we've got probably about three eighths worth of thread on the driver's side front heim joint on the upper four link bar. And at the back, what do we got at the back? Uh, we've got, it looks to be, can you see that probably? There we go, let's get a light there. And will you see that? Not very well, but if you get really close and you got really good eyes, you'll see that it looks to be about three eighths there as well. So that's pretty good. Usually when I set them up, I like to see, you know, a quarter to three eighths worth of thread on each side. So I like that. What I don't like is what I'm noticing here is it looks like somebody has put a pipe wrench on there to really crank that around. So I'm not sure what that's all about, but let's go over to the passenger side. Again, we have no thread left for adjustment on the bottom four link bar and up at the other end, there is no adjustment. So it sucked all the way in right now. So let's keep that information logged. Oh, I see something right now. So this is the passenger side heim joint. Look at how much more thread is sticking out there. You'd think everything should be pretty close in length. So what's that telling me? What's this one look like here? And what's this one? Can you see? Where is it? Right there. And you can see right there, there is a lot of thread. And mm, that would be concerning for me because there's usually about maybe two inches worth of thread altogether on a heim joint. And I can see an inch and a quarter plus the nut. So inch and a half. So there might be, I'm just taking a guess here and a stab in the dark, but maybe a half inch worth of thread still inside that upper four link bar. So that doesn't seem right because what that's telling me is this bar on this side is at least an inch longer than the bar on the driver's side. Now that makes more sense if you think about the rear end is pushed to the passenger side. So that could be a reason why it's over to the passenger side. We have all that thread right there and there it's pushing it that way because we're triangulated and that makes sense but why would that be i don't know now let's check the nuts these are jam nuts all right can i get my hand up in there that right there is a jam nut and it holds the heim joints from turning now with my fingers it's tight okay so that's tight if you come over to this side ah. Oh. I apologize again. I wish I could lift it up higher, but I wouldn't be able to get the same information. So let's just do it. And that one there is tight. So that tells me that it didn't just turn on its own. So it didn't just shift without human hands threading the heim joints out and locking them into position. So that seems odd so i'll be in it'll be interesting to see when i put this upper four link bar on my table with that upper four link bar and we're going to measure the difference in length now keep in mind that if that one is longer and that one is shorter the rear end is going to go that way which it is now, why would it be set up like that? I just don't see any way that it could just do it on its own at this point. Now, let's look for any failures as far as could something not be quite correct. I do notice this looks like a really nice store-bought four-link setup. You can see if you wanted to bag this Lincoln, you could put bags right here. And I imagine there was a different bottom bar that would have had a pad and you could have put an airbag there, which would have been super cool too. 
Now, what else can we learn under here? I think what we need to do at this point, we know for some reason our upper four link bars are way out of adjustment. And now, I don't know if you can see it from here because everything is so close, but that pinion angle is way out in my mind. Let's go and look, because that looks like there's not much room right there. Okay, so let's look at this. So you can see that that plug right there is like, there is a bit of a paint mark above it. You won't be able to see it, I don't think, but you can see also how close the rear end is to the tank. Now, I feel like when I had a glance, and we're gonna go back out and have a look at that. When I glanced at the center of the tire compared to the rear wheel opening, it looked really quite nice. Now, another thing that I can notice right there, as you can see, that the fuel tank has this little notch, right? And you can see the rear end is not centered in the notch. It's pushed to the passenger side, sorry, the rear ends to the passenger side. And if it was more to the driver's side, it would be more centered. If this is a factory tank, which I'm sure it is, this is the factory rear end, that should all line up. So why would it be set up to the passenger side? If you centered it, you'd get clearance right there at that drain bolt and you would have more clearance on the rear pumpkin. And you would also have more room at a ripped tank there. So I do notice everything is very tight and very close. So there's not much room for error, but it does seem weird. Now, let me, I just put two and two together here for a second. And now this is still just hypothetical, but could they, for clearance here, shorten the upper bars because they couldn't shorten the lower bars anymore? Could they have shortened the upper four link bars, turned this down, to get a little bit of clearance from the tank, pulling the rear end a little bit, you know, because in my mind right now, now this is just spitballing, I feel like the fix at this point is cutting these bottom four link bars, taking about three quarters of an inch of length out, so I've got some thread both ways then probably re-putting it together a quarter of an inch shorter, which would rotate my pinion angle up a little bit. And then I could add a little bit of length that would also pull the rear end forward a little bit at the same time. But if I lengthen the upper bars and straighten them out a little bit, it would finish rotating the pinion angle. So let's go get our angle finder and let's see what this pinion angle is compared to our engine. But right before we do that, let's just have one glance at, that looks pretty good to me. So why is that rear end so close to the tank? It makes me think like from factory, that rear end maybe was a little bit more forward, but I do think that once we shove the rear end to the driver's side, we're gonna be in that pocket better, and there's probably gonna be clearance there. So I've been working under the Lincoln Continental for a while now, and I'm really starting to see some issues. Remember in the beginning of this video when I mentioned that the rear of the car is sitting a little bit low? Well, I'm pretty sure whoever was putting the rear suspension together also knew it was too low and they were trying to crank it up by cranking this spring. Remember also, I went back and I looked at the rear suspension when we lifted it up in the hoist and it had like next to no movement. Well, that's because this nut is jacked so far up, it's pushing the end of the coil over all the way to the top. Now, a coil over only has so much stroke. 
and when the weight of the vehicle is on it, you should be roughly in the middle. So when you're going over bumps, you have traveled both ways. This right now is pushed all the way to the end and they've got the nuts so tight to try to get the height. You know, when in reality, this coil is just too short. Now, I can't raise the back end with this setup and either could whoever was putting it together. Now, this is starting to really tick me off. And if it doesn't tick you guys off as fabricators and hot rod builders, you're in the wrong business. When you know you have the wrong part and you're putting it in anyway, and you're walking away from it, like I've never claimed to be better than anybody else. I'm probably nowhere even close, but I have a lot of pride. And when I see something like that, it really makes my blood boil. So I'm going to go and order a new set of coilovers, probably two inches longer because I'd like to raise the car at least three quarters of an inch. So I might even have to find something two and a half inches longer. But either way, I am going to fix the issue. So we're almost ready to lift the car up. I need to move the rear axle forward to give myself that room because everything I'm doing right now is all to get the tank out. The new tank is on its way. We're gonna reinstall that and then I'm gonna fix all this stuff here and it will be running better than ever. Got my upper four link bars set up like they would be in the car. So your upper four link bars on a triangulated four link setup are what keep the axle from going left and right. And they're also what center the axle under the car when you're setting it all up. Now, my first glance, if we put these together, I notice right away that when I line that up there, look at the length difference. There's an inch worth of length difference. Those should be the same length. If everything is set up right, within a turn or two, you should be center with your axle Hence. under the car. Now, I have a big concern about this heim joint right here. That one's pretty bad too, but with my experience, there's only about two inches worth of thread on these heim joints. Maybe these ones are a little bit different, different brand, maybe there's more than two inch, but all the ones that I've seen are about two inches. I can see an inch and a quarter plus three eighths. So I'm really curious how much thread is actually inside that four link bar. And if it's what I think it is like three eighths of an inch, that could be a safety concern. If that ever pulled out, well now that rear end just goes whoop. And while we have a big accident, somebody could get hurt. So that is something that I am gonna look at and see how close it is. I don't think there's much in there. This mark right here with the pipe wrench makes me think that they were trying to get the rear end over to the driver's side, but you have to work these together. You can't just crank on this one and leave this one alone. This one's gotta be getting shortened as this one's getting length lengthened to bring it over. This is what we've got. I hope I explained that well. We still have to take these bottom four link bars out because they are all out of adjustment. They're, the heim joints are sucked in as far as they can go. So we need to shorten them a little bit. I kind of suspect they might've been shortened already once, but maybe not enough, judging by the big grinder gash on the driver's side one. So we're gonna kind of have a look at those as well. I'll show you how the heims are sucked all the way in. So there's no adjustability there. And to fix the pinion angle, I feel like I need to knock three quarters of an inch off so I've got adjustability, suck the bottom of the rear end under, which is gonna bring the pinion angle up, maybe get six degrees there. Then I will extend these. Once I thread this one in a little bit, I'll thread that out just a little bit and I will roll up the last five degrees, keeping the axle exactly where it was in the wheel opening, because it did look pleasing. If I am too close to the tank, that is an indicator that potentially that rear end would have been up towards the front a little bit more. So I've got the lower four link bars out of the vehicle and I'm gonna show you a little bit more why I feel like I need to shorten them a little bit. As you can see, there's no thread left there. So these are all the way in. 
Now, if I want to fix the pinion angle and rotate it up the 11 degrees that it needs, if I do it all in the upper four link bars, it's going to move the rear end back and it's gonna be even closer to the tank. And it's also gonna move our wheel opening you know, the rear end back in the wheel opening, which it was perfect before. So I feel like I need to knock about three quarters in length out. So in the end, after all my adjustments, I've got about a quarter inch of thread sticking out and I'll get probably about six degrees of rotation by sucking these in just a little bit more. And that's gonna move the rear axle forward in the wheel opening. And then I will lengthen these a little bit and get the last five degrees, which is also gonna roll the rear end back a little bit to make it exactly where it was in the car originally because it did look good. And from there, we will assess how close we are to the tank. And if we need to fudge anything just a little bit, we'll do that at that time. So I just wrestled the tank out. Let me tell you, that was one hell of a fight. It was pretty tight in there. There's a little closer look at our damage. Pretty good sized dent there. And there is a mark on this side which has me a little bit concerned. Now, if there's not enough triangulation on a triangulated four link to keep the rear end center, well, that could be a problem. Now, I don't know if that's a store-bought kit, because if it is, I would say it's engineered, but if somebody made this kit and it doesn't have enough, then that could be a pretty big issue. So I've got to do a little bit more investigating. I also noticed that there's one big dent and scrape here where the hole is, but there's also another one here, meaning the rear end must have been back. So maybe pinion angle was set, it was scraping, they wanted to fix the issue, pulled it forward, dropped it 12 degrees. Now the bolt was in this location maybe, I don't know. Maybe it was scraping on that side. They readjusted it and then it came to this side. That I don't know as well. So the mystery deepens. Okay, it's time to have a look at these heim joints. I'm curious to know how much thread we've got left inside the four link bar. See, there's no way that these spun to slide the rear end. Look they are tight. So there's one of them. And it's the worst one, the one I want to check first anyway. This one's still locked, I might have to put it in the vise. But I'm turning it back to where it was. Now it's free. Let's see how much thread we've got. Hopefully it was never a safety issue. Look at that. We're talking literally Four threads. Okay, now I've got to check the other end. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to bust. Oh yeah, maybe. yeah, I should get it. Okay, turned it back. Oh, hold on. Okay, so there it is. Let's thread it out. Un flipping believable. Wow. Leave a comment below what you guys think the results of a failure from this could have been. It would have been real bad. Now that I've got the fuel tank in, it's time to address the lower four link bars. As you can see, we're out of adjustment. They're sucked all the way in. So I'm thinking I'm going to shorten them right here about three quarters of an inch. You can see that's where the weld is. So I'm gonna cut on the pipe side of the weld so it's easier to pull it out. Then I will clean the weld off. So I'm thinking three quarters of an inch, but to be sure I need to thread one of these out to see if it's got two inches worth of thread as well. If it doesn't, then maybe I'll take a little bit less. So let's just have a look. I want the adjustability so I can 
you know, tweak pinion angle and all that stuff. So it's just gonna take me, you know, not very much time to actually shorten these and have all the adjustability I need. Yeah, there's definitely two inches there or more, holy cow. Wow, I could probably take a little bit more than three quarter off, but we've got at least two and a half inches there of thread. So maybe I will take, eh, I'm still gonna take three quarters of an inch because that's all I'm gonna need. Got both the slugs out. I cut on the far side of the well just because it's easier to find the thickness of the pipe and pull the piece out. Now, I'm kind of glad that I am shortening roughly three quarters of an inch because you can see there's that zip cut gouge right there. I'm gonna be able to remove most of that. So let's do the cut and splice and slice and dice and weld back up and back under the cart goes. Now that I've took the three quarters of an inch off, I can see that there is a step in there. So I gotta take this over to the lathe and lathe that back a little bit more or I'm not gonna be able to put my slug back in all the way. So, so I've got the upper four link bars adjusted to the same length. I'm gonna install them like that. I'm gonna to try to keep them as close to the same length as possible. My only variations will be if I have to push the rear end one way or the other to get it centered up in the vehicle, but they should maintain pretty close to the same length. There's a lot of thread in there for a reason. The other thing that I need to do is once I do have my pinion angle set, I'm going to physically look how much thread I have sticking out. And if I feel like it's too much and there's not enough insertion, then I'm going to remake these upper bars longer. So I feel like by the time I shift the rear end to the driver's side and I thread the heim joints in on the passenger side, that's what's gonna cause it to go to the driver's side. I think there's gonna be lots of thread inside. So that's one thing that I need to keep in mind. Your upper four link bars do two things. They hold the rear end from going left and right, like a panhard bar. And they also help turn pinion angle up and down. So I'm gonna be able to do all that adjustment. And then we're gonna see what we got, make an assessment, make sure it's safe and move forward, or we're gonna take the time to go back a step and fix any problems. All right, it's time to look at the coilover and why the suspension was so tight. Looking at this right off the bat, I mentioned that this was threaded way up. These springs come as 12 inch long springs. So let's measure it and see how much it's compressed. Now, the more you compress it, the stiffer the suspension is gonna be. And just by looking at it, you can see inside here that it's only working on the bottom little bit of stroke. So there's really next to no movement there. So my thoughts are the reason why when we lifted the car up and the tire lifted off of the blocking right away is because it's already all the way up as far as it can be. And because this is so tight, it's holding it way up there. So when you put the weight of the vehicle down, it only shortens by a half an inch, giving you really next to no suspension. So let's measure it, see where it's at right now, and I'll let you know what we're gonna do to fix it. So this 12 inch spring is compressed to nine and seven eighths. So you can see at 12 inch, way down here is kind of more where it should be. Yeah, you can compress it just a little bit, but usually, you know, the weight of the vehicle sits on that 12 inch spring, and then you just use this to raise or lower the ride height a little bit. And I feel like they were trying to keep it as high as possible because this body is just too short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run to my local hardware store or parts store, I should say, and I'm gonna see if I can't find a coil over about two inches longer. So from this eye to this eye, I want it to be two inches longer. Then I can take a lot of this stress off of this spring. It's gonna raise the back of the car up just a little bit and be more in 
the center. As you can see, we've got this much stroke all together. When this comes all the way down to there, it's all the way bottomed out. At ride height, you wanna be sitting about there. So this should be down at the top of the body. You know, so then you have equal suspension kind of up and down as you're going over the bumps. And right now, this is just jacked up. So I've got the spring loosened off. You can see how far it came down. It is just loose there now. And if we measure it, we're right down at 12 inches. So it was compressed over two inches. And you wonder why you've got no suspension or next to, to no suspension. Now that I've got my upper four length bars installed and the same length, I've set my pinning angle roughly. I can only set it roughly because the weight of the vehicle needs to be on the rear end. And while well, the coilovers are still laying on the floor, I'm waiting for my two inch adapters so I can kind of level everything out and make that right. But let's just quickly go over and see if the rear axle is in there straight now that we've got our upper four link bars at the same length. If you guys remember, we were at five inches on this side and three on the other side. So if I can get right above here, you'll be able to see that we're, we're pretty much right on four inches. Go around to the other side. And if you can see, it looks like we're pretty darn close to four inches as well. So that rear axle is now centered because we've got those four link bars at the same length. Now, I felt like my wheel was a little bit forward in the wheel arch, but there's another way that you can determine that. Because this car is stock, that drive shaft should be stock. And as long as they didn't move the engine placement, which I doubt they did, you should be driving your drive shaft into the transmission and when you line it up to the rear end, sliding it back about a half an inch. That's perfect length. And when I went underneath there and did that, I'm already at about an inch. Let me go under and show you exactly what I mean. I don't really feel comfortable going back anymore. And that does look pretty good, you know? But if you pull your yoke too far out of the transmission, you could end up with vibration and other issues. So I feel like that's right about where it's supposed to be. All right, I'm setting pinning angle. Like I said before, that I want my rear end pointing down one degree compared to the engine and transmission combination. And right now you can see I'm half a degree off. I zeroed this on the end of the transmission so I know it's half a degree off. And now I just need to figure out which way I need. Oh, that's the wrong way. So we'll start rotating it down. And this is just getting me in the ballpark so I can have a look at the wheel to the wheel opening. Right there, one degree, that's where I want it set. Right. Right around 100. You guys get the drift. I need to get the coilovers so I can finish it. So I'm just about to hook up the drive shaft and I noticed this right here and it got me thinking. I have seen these on trucks more up at the transmission, but I've never seen one on the back of a drive shaft on a car. Could this make it so pinion angle doesn't matter so much? Like you could tip the pinion angle down, hook this up and you won't get any vibration. The reason I'm asking is because from the top of the drive shaft to the bottom of the floor, you know, it's close. There's enough room there for the suspension to travel, but potentially from the factory, could this rear end be pointing down a little bit more, which is gonna gain clearance here, and this be so you don't get any vibration at high speed? Might be a stupid question, I'm not sure. Leave a comment below if you know, and we can learn some. So I did a bunch of scientific research on YouTube, and I found that this joint on the end of our drive shaft is actually called a cardan joint, or a constant velocity joint and it's to take angle change and minimize vibration. So what I've researched in the Lincoln Continental, they actually turn the pinion angle down 
And the reason for that is because they want to maintain a decent ride height, but because this is a luxury car, they want to minimize the hump in the floor for people in the back seat. So what they did is turn the pinning angle down, add one of these joints, and what that does is it brings the drive shaft down and allows the rear end to go up. So we learned something today. As Gene Winfield would say, every day is a school day. So I've turned the pinning angle down back to the 12 degrees. And I wanna show you guys, just before I start tightening up all of my bolts, how my Heim joints look now. You can see that they're inserted quite far. The rate where I like to see them, that quarter inch to three eighths worth of thread. And I have adjustability both ways still. They're all like that on both sides. I'll go to the other side, but you can see it right there. And where I shortened the bottom four link bars, you can see that we've got some adjustability. I took about three quarters to seven eighths of an inch out of the length here. You can see there's my weld and I've moved the rear end forward probably about at least a half an inch. The reason why I know that was the right thing to do was two things. Number one, they would never make a vehicle with no clearance from the tank to the rear end. Now you can get up here, you know, you can access, you know, there's enough room for your hand. But more importantly, when I drove the drive shaft home all the way into the transmission and I looked at the gap that was between the end of the drive shaft and the yoke on the rear end, well, right now I'm sitting at just under an inch. And like I said before, a half inch of slide back is roughly perfect. So I know that when this rear end was all the way back to the tank, that drive shaft must have been pulled out of the transmission roughly inch and three quarters, maybe two inches, which I think is too far. So with all of that information, I made the best judgment that I could and I set the rear end right where it's at. And it does look pleasing when you look at the car from the side, it doesn't look like the rear end is too far forward. So I'm gonna tighten up all these bolts, wait for my adapters for the coils, and we're gonna finish this job. So every day that we have this car in the shop, we're one scratch away from disaster. And it got me thinking. I took the tire off and I've been looking at this bottom mount right here for the coilover. And really all we need is to have this mount two and a half inches higher. Now we're 10 days away from getting our parts to extend this only two inches higher. That's the max I could get to modify the coilover. Now in a day, I could take this, cut it off right there, make two new ears. You could almost take those ears and mount them up here, but I'm thinking about making two new ears and mounting them here and having them come off two and a half inches higher and then cutting this off and cleaning it all up. That's gonna solve our issue and get this car out way faster. So this is where I'm at. I've got my tabs tacked on. I'm about to burn these welds in right now. This looks a little bit funny right now because the old tabs are still there. I'm gonna be cutting them off right there and put an under strap on. Then I can clean it all up and it'll look like it was never modified. Just finished up with the modification. Everything's looking good. Everything is back together and tight. We're just about to put the wheels on and take it out for a cruise and see how it feels. So I just got back from my test drive and there is something really messed up about this front suspension. So we gotta dive in and have a look. So I now find myself under the front of the car. When I took it out for the drive, it just, it seemed like it was riding on hydraulics. It was just bouncing like crazy. And what I'm starting to think is because they had to crank the back coilovers up so hard to get the height, they lowered the front so low to get the car to level out. You can see that the front suspension here is completely all the way down. So these nuts are all the way to the bottom of the thread, trying to lower the car as much as possible to get it leveled out. Now that spring is pretty heavy, but we're not gonna know if it's too heavy or not until we take it out. So we're gonna be able to do a little bit of math on the table and figure out if that's too heavy of a spring. But my gut is telling me right now that because that nut is all the way down, I feel like the body of the coil over and the amount of stroke that it has 
were all the way down onto the bottom. So when you actually push the front of the car down, it's bouncing all in the tire. There is no more down travel or very little down travel. So what our remedy is here, just looking at this, like I said, you buy aftermarket parts, you're 80% there. You always got to tweak stuff. So right off the bat, I'm thinking to myself, if I needed to lower this coilover, what would I do? Well, fortunately, we got these big tabs here and they're hollow all the way through. So all we need to do to lower this car is take this bolt out, drill it down here, reshape this ear. We can drop this down. Then we can crank these nuts back up to get back to the original ride height. But to be honest with you, I'd like to see the car an inch lower. So we're gonna do all the math. We're gonna figure out how low we've gotta come with this bolt to drop the car one inch and be in the center of our stroke on the body of the coilover so the suspension is perfect. Then we'll determine if this spring is too heavy. Right now it's a 650, which is pretty heavy, but this is a pretty heavy car. So if anything, I might try to search to see if I can find a 550 or a 500, but this spring still might be okay. So if we're in the bottom of the stroke on the body of this coilover, of course we have no suspension because I do notice when you lift the car up, the tire stays on the ground for two to three inches. So that's telling me that there's lots of up travel, but there just might be no more down travel. So you just can't make this stuff up. Before we took this coilover spring out, we measured how far this spring was compressed. This is a nine inch spring and under the car when it was on its own wheels, under its own weight, we measured the spring at five and 15 sixteenths long. So when I come over here to the table now and I wanna find out where we are in the stroke, because there is a stroke to this body, you've got four inches or so. So if I replicate how far that spring was compressed on here, because when it was in the car, you couldn't see the top of the coil, so you couldn't really see how far it was compressed. Let me show you something. Here's our spring all the way collapsed. So we have no suspension here. And if I put this on here, we've got a hair over six inches. And I think that this spring still, nope, that's fully collapsed. So it was completely bottomed out. The other reason why I know that is because this coil is now destroyed. See my hand underneath there? That is not supposed to look like that. It's driven up that way, which is oblonged that hole. So this car had absolutely no suspension front or back. Wow. But we are gonna fix it because that's what we do here at Dubs Customs. So this is our coil fully extended. There's our four inches. And you can actually see, there's a little bit of a remnants on here of what once was a small little bump stop that's been completely destroyed because this thing's been just slamming down on the bottom. And that's why when I drove it, there was so much bounce. It was just bouncing all over the road. It's because it was the actual rubber of the tire that was bouncing down the road, there was absolutely no suspension, no give in that, so it wasn't able to kind of smooth itself out. So now that we know that we were completely compressed on our coil spring and we have four inches of travel in that spring, to bring ourselves to optimal stroke on the coil, being two inches from bottomed out and maintaining this same ride height, we know that our fix, which is a pretty easy one. Remember I said aftermarket parts, which these are, are only 80%. Now we've got these two big wings here that the bottom of the coilover sits in. If we drop this hole down by two inches, we're gonna be able to maintain our ride height and be an optimal spot on our coil. Now we wanna try to lower the car even a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring this hole as far down as we possibly can, just above this pipe, 
So the coilover still fits. We'll just reshape that. That's what we do. Pretty simple, this one. And we're going to resurrect this issue, which it should have been done right off the bat. about cutting up a brand new build but it's all in the name to make it right Gotta clean these up put this all back together so what we've done is really just lowered the bottom boss where the coilover sits to do one of two things lower the car just a little bit and allow us to crank the nut up on our coilovers to get more in the optimal range so we actually have some suspension Let's get out the grinder, clean that up, and put this thing back together. Just a quick tip, when you guys are putting parts together and they require grease, make sure you're putting grease everywhere and you're cycling the part. Because it definitely shouldn't sound like that. So let's take this apart a little bit, fix it, and we'll try to cycle it, see what it sounds like. So what I'm doing is just, I've loosened that nut off there and I'm trying to get some grease in there. I've already greased all this, cycled it, still wasn't good. So we've loosened it off and I'm pretty sure our squeaking is coming from that washer and that rubber right there as it cycles. Now that I've got grease on both sides and I've tightened everything up, this part is not fully installed until we cycle it to make sure it's not squeaking. You can tell there is a huge difference there. Now this part is installed and we can move on. We just need to hope that whoever did install the rest of these components didn't forget grease and other spots because squeaks are annoying and very unnecessary. Grease is your friend. On a test drive with the Lincoln, everything seems to be good now after reworking the front suspension and the back suspension, I think we've got it dialed in. There's definitely still more adjustments that we can do, but it feels pretty good. This is quite enjoyable. Next, we'll be heading down the highway, bring her up to speed, and see how that feels. So with a little bit of detective work, we determined three things. Number one, the rear end was never centered, and that's why we got the hole in the tank. Number two, our coil springs were too short. That's why the suspension was so tight. And number three, there was a safety issue with our hind joint. Now, by no means do we want to bewittle any fabricator that worked on this car. And if you guys know where this car was built, please keep it to yourself. I'm gonna end this video. Like always, stay out there. Hey. Now for the reward. Spark and steel in the desert dust Dreams rise from the brazen dust Riddle maker howl and thrust New beast born from the valley of rust Hands rough cut like jagged crows Battle bending story grows